tonight. A magic win? Rejected concrete given a new purpose. Battle for true colours and the Waikato SPCA. Kia ora and good evening. Welcome to Central News on TV Central for Monday the 13th of April. I'm Amanda Harper. In today's news, Kia Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic showed they had learned an important lesson after delivering a 63-57 away win against the dangerous Ascot Park Hotel Southern Steel in Invercargill on Saturday. With the visitors dominating for three quarters of the match, the introduction of Katerina Cooper and Jane Watson added some start for Steele as the home team rallied strongly in the final quarter. Steele got as close as four goals, but Magic's young talent continued to show their growing composure and maturity. The three 19-year-olds in their lineup delivering top performances. Magic set themselves up with a clinically efficient opening stanza, a seven-goal lead and a strong mental result at the end, proving too much for a steel team left in chase mode. This weekend is the Battle for True Colours Boxing Competition in Hamilton on the Friday, the 17th of April. With two workplaces vying against each other, it will be all on at the Hamilton Gardens Pavilion. Organised and trained by Team George Promotions, all proceeds from the night will go towards True Colours Children's Health Trust. For most of the fighters, it will be their first fight, and one side have been training hard for the big night. Door sales are available on the night, with the doors opening at 6pm and the fight starting at 7.30. The Department of Conservation are encouraging locals to go off the beaten track in the Bay of Plenty by offering free monthly walks, starting this Wednesday. The program is designed to get people of various fitness levels involved, with offerings ranging from a native bushwalk along the Kara Karahang Karangahake Gorge Tunnel to a river crossing on the Bluff Stream Cody. The event, which runs from 9.30 in the morning to 4 o'clock in the afternoon, invites people to walk the Tuahu Track via a huge Cody Tree to the North South Summit, bringing views from the Kaimai Hills to North Waikato. Those interested should meet at the Docks Tauranga offices on Chadwick Road West, but bookings are essential. Partnerships ranger Kirsten Wood says these walks, walks will get everyone involved. It's an opportunity for children and their families to get out and explore. The tracks range from flat walks to high incline walks of up to eight hours. So far, monthly walks are set for April and to August, but Doc hasn't set dates for these walks during the warmer months of September to December. Rejected concrete segments from New Zealand's biggest roading project have been rehomed for a newly erected soldiers' memorial on the village green in Te Kaufata in North Waikato. Each segment weighs 10 tonnes. Two of these segments lean together and represent the spirit of Anzac, New Zealand and Australian soldiers supporting each other. The other three have inscriptions in Māori and English and the names of locals who served in all services from World War I through to East Timor. Project Precast Sub-Alliance Manager Andy Bold says they are extremely honoured to support Te Kaufata's community and make a contribution like this, especially as Anzac Day later this month marks the centenary of the troop landings at Gallipoli in Turkey. Keep an eye out for Keko these school holidays as the mascot from manupbus.com is on a road trip around the country. Keko will be getting to know some of the locals and telling them all about manupbus.com. As of 1st of, the, of May, Manabus will double services to Tauranga with two arrivals and departures every day of the year. These new services will help connect Tauranga with direct services to Hamilton, Auckland and Whangarei. It also allows Tauranga passengers to connect with other manabus.com services going down to Rotorua, Taupo and Wellington. To keep track of Keko, check out the photos with hashtag Keko on the loose on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And now for our region's weather. Well, I can definitely say that winter is here. Compared with last week and the weekend, we'd have a definite drop in temperatures. Hamilton, it'll be showers, clearing and fine spells increasing. Southwesterlies, high of 15 and low of 4. Rest of the Waikato will be the same. Pairo, your high is 16, low of 5. Matamata, 13 and 4. Te Aumotu, 15 and 4. Tokoroa, 12 and a low of 2. 
Tauranga, showers clearing in the morning with fine spells increasing southwesterlies as well, high of 16 and low of 7. Te Puki, your high is 14 and overnight low of 6. And for the marine forecast, West Coast Raglan easing on Tuesday morning to a southwesterly 20 knots. High tide is at 12 past 6 pm. And on the east coast, Bay of Plenty easing in the morning to a southwesterly 20 knots as well. Your high tide is at 2.44 in the afternoon. Coming up in the show, New Zealand Tall Blacks. Welcome back to Central News. World Skills NZ is an independent, non-profit, charitable trust dedicated to encouraging young people to excel in vocational skills. Rachel Sutton talked to Hamiltonian Chelsea Kuriga, who is representing New Zealand in the automotive technology category. And she finds out what her background is and how she got to where she is today. Uh, well, I grew up on a dairy farm. Well, about five or six different dairy farms, actually. And I pretty much was always a farming kid, kind of wanted to do that, go down that direction. But I kind of got an interest into cars through Dad and followed him to all his little car shows that he went to and stuff like that. So growing up, did you always have an interest in cars? And from what age? Uh, yeah, I'd say I was always pretty interested in cars. Like Dad always had his special cars that always hid in the garage and I'd always, like when I was a kid, run down to the garage and pretend to drive them while Dad wasn't there. But yeah, now, I've always been pretty interested. Working at Waikato Toyota, what's it like working in a male-dominated industry? Uh, when I first started it was interesting, to say. Like a lot of people aren't really used to having a female working with them in a workshop like that. Like when you first start out you don't think someone else is going to be with you on that sort of level. But yeah, I, I love it now. You represent New Zealand in rock and roll dancing and coach children. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Uh, yeah, I started dancing 12 years ago and I danced for a club in Hamilton called Drifters Rock and Roll Club. Uh, that's pretty much the only really hobby I had when I was growing up, was just dancing and nationals. Do you have any challenges with juggling so much and how do you overcome those challenges? Uh, I think it's a lot easier to just prioritise what you're doing, so make certain times for certain things and try not to try and do everything at once. You've always got to have time for yourself as well and for family and friends. You won a certain something on a TV show, what was that? Uh, yeah, the TV show was called The Test Driver. It was sponsored by Ford and it was a car driving competition and it was me and my friend Emily and we just did a whole bunch of challenges involving the car and its features as such. And yeah, we just ended up having the best times at the end of the day and won the car. What kind of car did you win? Uh, Ford Mondeo. You've nearly finished your apprenticeship through Wintech. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, it's been interesting. Like a lot of the, because it's a more theory based apprenticeship instead of a practical. It's a little bit harder, like going home from work at the end of the day and then having to do book work instead of, you know, just doing stuff at work. I found that quite hard and being a little bit motivated after working kind of gets to you a bit. And what has led you on the path to competing? Uh, I think it's just in my nature, like always been brought up competing through rock and roll and netball and stuff like that and then also trying to get out and proving that females can get in there as well and that we are actually pretty good at what we do. What are your drivers and what keeps you motivated? Uh, I'd say a lot of it is just the enjoyment that I get out of it and I've just always enjoyed fixing stuff and finding out what's wrong and why things don't work. Can you talk me through a day of your training? Uh, yeah, I turn up and Ray comes in and we sit down and we pretty much plan out what we're going to do, so whatever challenge we're going to tackle, so if it's the engine rebuild or the gearbox rebuild or something, then we just go through it and try and get it within the time limit as well. Good luck to Chelsea and the rest of the team. Battle for True Colours is a corporate boxing match organised by Team George Promotions to raise money for True Colours Children's Health Trust. It's on this Friday in Hamilton. Cairo George and Nicole Bradley tell me more. So Battle of True Colours is an event put together where 
um, just your average type of people are going to step outside their comfort zone in a boxing match for, for a charity and the charity that's been selected is True Colours. And why this particular charity? Because um, one of the competitors um, had a lot of help and support from the True Colours charity uh, with sick children. Okay. Now Nicole, you are fighting in the match and I understand the fighters are also training at your gym here in Matamata. How do you feel in the lead up? I mean you're fighting next weekend. How does it feel? Um, I think it's, it's come around really quickly. Um, yeah, it's, I mean a week is not long to go so the nerves are pretty scary and racing and but exciting at the same time because it is for a good cause and we just sort of say to each other you know, at the end of the day, we've done what we can in a short amount of time, and you know, we've got to think of those kids that we're raising money for. So all those tickets we sell, and everything's going to be for a great cause. Yeah. Yeah. And where is the match? Uh, the, mat, the event's going to be held at uh, Hamilton Gardens on April seventeenth. So it's uh, going to be a good night, and like um, like she said, it's going to be for a good cause. So I take my hat off to these people. You know, they're, they're not fighters or top athletes as such, and. So they're really stepping out their comfort, stepping outside their comfort zone. So proud of all of them. Nice. So they're all amateurs, is that what you're saying? <coughs> I don't know what. Amateur fighters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah so they're all going to be first timers, and yeah. I know they're all going to feel the same as her. So all, yeah, it's going to be a good night. Yeah. Now tell me about the training that you've been doing. What kind of training have you been up to? Well, for the first couple of weeks, because obviously none of us were boxers, and there was a lot that weren't used to exercise as well. So it was a lot of burpees, you know, running, um, box jumps, you know, just lots of high intensity sprinting and, you know, stuff that no one really likes to do. But um, the training's been awesome, you know, and I've, we've met, like our team's become quite a good unit. You know, we all get on really, really well and I've made some really good friends and um, met some, you know, cool people. And Charlie, who's been training us, he's a pretty hard man, you know, with sprints and stuff. and. You know, so it has been, the training's awesome. I've loved the training. I definitely want to keep the training up. And it's just the boxing side of it that's the hard part because we've, you know, had such a short amount of time to sort of take in a lot. I've got a new respect for boxers because everybody thinks boxing is just an easy thing to do and you don't realise actually how much brain you actually need. Like people think boxers are... I wouldn't say dumb, but just no brainers because you're getting punched in the face and you know, but it's actually all your combos are really hard to remember and it's focus and it's thinking and it's, you know, every every punch, it's about moving your feet, it's everything. It's harder than studying for any exam I've studied for, so yeah, I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. Do you have any advice for Nicole? Uh, no, it's easier said than done, but just basically to stay calm, you know, try not to get too worked up because if you get to work up, you could freeze up on the night, so just try and relax about and just think about those children, eh? Just think about why you're doing it. Yeah. yeah. What do you think will be going through your mind when the lights are on and you're just about to sort of step into the ring? I think I might throw up. <laughs> might need a shot of brandy or something to calm the nerves. Um, yeah, I guess, um, you know, sort of two weeks ago I was really, really nervous and then um, a wise person said to me, you know, you've done this for a good cause again it's like think of all those kids that you're going to help so I actually went home and I watched some videos of kids with cancer and it's really sad and being a mum of four it's kind of like you do anything for your kids mm. so if you can help one child or two children you know for you know whatever then I think anybody can do it you just got to kind of think like that you know at the end of the day the ref's there to make a fight safe and I don't see it as a fight I see it as going out there and enjoying it like you've done all that hard training and as much as nobody likes to lose, but it's not about winning or losing because you're already winning by raising money for these kids. So it's kind of, that's how I'm going to go into it anyway. We'll see. Door sales are available on the night from 6pm onwards at the Hamilton Gardens Pavilion. Stay with us. After the break, we head to the Hamilton Gardens, but for something a little bit different. Welcome back. Hamilton Gardens is proposing the creation of four new gardens within four years. The first of the gardens, the Tudor Garden, was opened earlier this year. Reporter Rachel Sutton chats to one of the gardeners himself, Bernard Breen. Okay, the, the Tudor Garden uh, is a garden uh, around the, the 1500s. Uh, it was a garden in particular around Henry VIII's time. 
Now the uh, Tudors themselves uh, romanticised medieval times and that's why there's a lot of heraldic um, symbols in um, medieval or not gardens. So if you look up here you actually see these beasts. Now historically the beasts would have been more common things such as bears and lions um, or dragons or deer. But we've actually gone for mystical beasts as this is part of our fantasy collection. Those, so this is actually one of our fantasy gardens. So if we look at the beasts on top, um, if you can see in the far corner, there's a griffin there. And you see that all, all the beasts have actually got coats of arms. And these coats of arms represent famous Tudor people around that time. So the griffin over there has got the coat of arms of Henry VIII. The uh, satyr here, the little grey one here, is Sir Francis Bacon. The dragon, uh, Elizabeth I. Uh, bottom is actually Shakespeare. Um, the unicorn, Mary Queen of Scots. Uh, the phoenix, Sir Francis Drake. The sea serpent, Sir Walter Raleigh. And the centaur is Sir Thomas More. So they're actually all famous people around the Tudor period. Now the green and white, that's actually the Tudor colours. So that's actually what they wore into battle. Um, on their shields and what have you. Uh, the, the building itself is actually based on a, um, a place called Montacute over in Somerset, over in England. So it's in, in Montacute, it's actually part of the uh, uh, gatehouses. There's actually two of them. We've actually got one, as well as the Elizabethan wall, which is here. Um, Montacute was finished around 1601, so it's that. Down the far end, which you might have um, is a statue of Pan. Um, again, the uh, Tudors sort of were, were educated and also during this time printing press were actually being used a lot. So they were actually very um, educated and they read a lot of books and a lot of them were like the Greek um, tragedies. And of course they also wanted to emulate their um, Italian cousins who had all these statues and what have you. Um, so hence we've got Pan, who, who's actually the god of um, fertility as well as wild places. Um, the knot gardens themselves, the knots actually got quite an old history, um, even going back right through to the Medastic uh, period. These ones are actually kind of cool because they're actually based on a guy called Thomas Hill or Didymus Mountain. And how long did it take to physically create the gardens? Um, it took... Um, probably on an average probably about three to four years to actually get this garden done. Um, obviously it's quite an involved uh, process, um, there's obviously the d designing of the garden in the first place which our uh, gardening director Peter Sergal organised and then it was a matter of us getting all the hard landscaping done as well as all the um, beasts put in place and the hedging and we actually closed the garden, garden um, last August and we actually finished the garden off and we actually put in the pavilion and the arbour and the wall and the statues. So, um, so yeah, about three to four years. So it's been quite, quite, a, quite a while. And how do tourists receive the gardens and the whole experience? I, I think they really enjoy it. I think the gardens overall, because it, one thing, it, it's free for, for entry in here. Um, and there's such a variety of, of gardens here. And this is actually a, a, a quite a change to a lot of the other gardens here. And a lot of the overseas people sort of identify with this style of garden as well. Um, so it, it's actually very, uh, very cool. The Tudor Gardens are open for viewing and they do look amazing, as you can see. SPCA Waikato is an incorporated society that exists to improve the lives of animals. We talked to Executive Officer of the Waikato SPCA about their goals for 2015 and how you can get involved. So we're currently in the peak of our kitchen seasons. We've got about 430 kitchens in foster homes. We would have probably 70 odd cats and kitchens on site. Um, I think we've got about 28 dogs on site and probably another 15 or 20 in foster homes. What support do you get from other Waikato organisations? Well, look, we get an enormous amount of support from all sorts of organisations in the Waikato and that might be from literally businesses that want to do a fundraising event for us. Um, we've got a number of sponsors or small sponsors that help us with things like our printing and our advertising and all that sort of thing. So we get a heap of Waikato support. Where do the funds come from to feed all the animals? Literally every single dollar that we spend is donated so we have to find that money in a whole heap of ways. 
Do you have foster homes? So absolutely, we wouldn't survive without our foster homes. They are almost the backbone of our organisation at this time of year. Uh, we have foster families for cats and kittens. We have foster families for dogs, foster families for puppies. We've currently got some ponies on foster. Um, so really quite a myriad of, of different animals out there. Um, how it works, people who want to open their homes to help us, maybe don't want an animal permanently or just want to be that extra bit of support, um, they'll take a, a litter of kittens or a mummy cat and kittens home. They might look after her for anything from a week to six weeks. Um, and then she comes back in time to be adopted. And how many foster carers do you have in the Waikato region? We have currently about 140 feline fosterers and around 30 or so canine fosterers. April is your second wave of kitten drop-offs. Why is that? Literally the kitten season's lasting a long time these days and, and cats tend to cycle in their first cycle around October. Um, they have their kittens and then they tend to have their second wave of kittens somewhere between December, January, February. So of course those kittens then are old enough to come to us in about March and April and we hit the biggest peak of the year at this time. If we have viewers that are interested in providing a foster home, what is the process for that? really easy. So they can either go online onto our website, so www.waikatoespca.org.nz and download a form and fill it in, bring it to us. Um, they can come in and fill out a form with our front of house team. Uh, if it's a dog fosterer, we do do a property check to make sure they've got a nice secure space. Um, for cat fosterers, it's a nice easy process. They literally sign up and we give them some cuties to take home and look after. And what is the process for adopting a pet? Yeah, so that one's really easy too. We do have a, a different protocol for dogs again because when we're adopting a dog we want to make sure it's going to a safe environment so when people have come in and met a dog chosen the dog it's a bit of a matchmaking um, in reality it's not about what color the dog is or how big it is it's about their lifestyle um, what the dog needs and what suits uh, once they've done that they fill out a, a property check form and someone goes around and makes sure their property's property secure if it's a cat um, we just need to know that they either own their own home or they have the, um, their, their landlord's blessing to have a cat um, and they can take that cat home that day. What are resources like for the SPCA? Look, we currently in our site we are under resource for space and our, our animal facility isn't as um, comfy and warm in winter and cold in summer and all that sort of thing as it could be, but we're pretty well blessed with resources. The Waikato SPCA always need donations of food and money or even time. Head down to your local SPCA and volunteer. Thank you for watching Central News tonight. We do post everything online on our website, tvcentral.co.nz and we also like to keep in touch with our viewers on Facebook. Search centralnews.tv and make sure you like the page. If you think you have a story lead for us, email news at tvcentral.co.nz. We would always love to hear from you. I will be back on screen tomorrow night with more stories from the Waikato and the Bay of Plenty. My name is Amanda Harper. Have a good night. Paul Marie. This has been an Alpha Media production, a division of Television Media Group. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.